Hello and welcome. So today I'm going to show you another reason why you should never trust feminists when they say that they are for equality and all of that. You see, I mean, look at this, right? So 30 feminist organizations in Spain protested the creation of a foundation to help male victims of domestic violence in Valencia. Right. I mean, just look at the mass of protesters here, right? Feminist protesters protesting against the creation of a foundation, basically of an organization to help male victims of domestic violence. I mean, I rest my case, honestly. If this is not evidence that feminism is a hate movement, then what is? Like, seriously. And also this goes to all these people who say that, oh, you know, man's rights and feminists, they're just the same, right? They're both these, they, they want to make this equivalence, right? Like they, they want to basically um, delegitimize our opposition to feminism, right? And they should, and, and they say that, oh, we should just get along with feminists and shake hands and be buddy-buddy and fight together against sexism and all this nonsense, right? This is a prime example of why this does not work, obviously. And we have so many examples, like I made so many videos showing where feminists have actively, proactively fought against equality, right? Have interfered with man's rights, have attacked man's rights. I have shown this time and time again on my channel and other videos and other creators have, uh, content creators have shown us as well. So this cannot be argued anymore, right? especially when it comes to domestic violence, feminists have for years, for decades, undermined male victims of domestic violence and the justice in, in that relation, right? This is just unbelievable how anyone who is even remotely on the left or who's remotely calls themselves a progressive, how, how can they justify these things? How can they tolerate these things, right? Feminism is clearly a hate movement. End of story. And I mean, look at this, right? This is uh, from this is from Australia, and this is uh, just basically calling for men to stop congregating in groups, right? In relation to uh, to domestic violence in Australia, right? This has been written by some feminist journalists called Back Day. Right, and she just calls for the government coming in and stopping men from meeting in groups in in the public. Like this is some straight up fasc fascist shit, right? And this is just based on her cherry picking a bunch of data points, right? Random data points, uh, without actually showing the equivalent to uh, the equivalent male victims, right? Just showing the female victims, not the male victims, and then saying that oh in australian society is unsafe to to be a woman or something meanwhile the actual evidence shows that in australia men are also overrepresented as victims um like of of uh, homicide right men are 11 times more likely than women to be killed by a stranger so obviously it is men who are uh, not safe in australia Right and other uh, like crime-related statistics bear bear that out as well. Men are the vast majority of victims of all kinds of crimes. I've shown this in another video about Australia, and also women are actually more likely to plot the killing of their spouse. Okay, this gives us ample reason to believe that Australia is actually an unsafe place for men not the other way around right but let's go over some facts regarding uh, domestic violence in general right because i think that you can effectively defeat feminism when you just show them the facts okay so here are seven key facts about domestic violence this comes from the end to domestic violence coalition right fact number one each year similar numbers of men and women experience physical domestic violence and psychological aggression according to the u.s centers for disease control okay and as you can see more victims of domestic violence 
violence are male okay and psychological aggression it's it's roughly similar okay um fact number two domestic violence rates are higher in certain groups so lesbian groups have higher uh, have higher rates of domestic violence than than gays now this is also important to point out because feminists will always make this whataboutism when it comes to when we point out how men are the vast majority of victims of violence in general and then they point out but yeah uh, men are also most of the perpetrators or like it's men on men violence um and they want to sort of imply that therefore we shouldn't care about male victims of violence because it's mostly men who attack other men or something which i'm not even which i'm also doubting actually but that's for another time but even if that was true like that doesn't mean we shouldn't care about male victims of violence just because the perpetrator was also a male right like we wouldn't make this argument in a case of uh, uh, like lesbian female victims of domestic violence like we wouldn't say that oh because the perpetrator was a woman we shouldn't care about the female victim they would never make that argument they would never nobody would make that argument and yet we have to sort of accept this line of reasoning when it comes to male victims right and then also fact three partner aggression is often two-way a comprehensive review of the research found that 58 percent of all intimate partner violence is bidirectional a survey funded by the cdc found that injury was more than twice as likely when the domestic vi when the violence was reciprocal compared to unidirectional violence domestic violence rates have fallen dramatically since the 1970s. Since the mid 1970s, domestic violence among intimate partners has fallen dramatically. Whether violence is assess assessed by community sur surveys, crime surveys of non fatal violence, or FBI homicide statistics. It's also important to point out that this kind of violence actually has dropped. Um, but here's also very uh, important information about who actually gets the vast majority of help when it comes to domestic violence and it's actually not the main victims like male victims of domestic violence are the majority yet women get the vast majority of help right so when it comes to legal assistance the vast majority goes to females when it comes to rural assistance the vast majority goes to females when it comes to sexual assault services the vast majority goes to females when it comes to transitional housing vast majority goes to females and on and on and on right so this just is a massive injustice okay massive injustice and it is brought about by people like this right by feminists who have worked that these conditions are like this like male victims of domestic violence or of sexual assault they get no help basically right look at these statistics okay this is just unbelievable Th those are actual material issues that men have to suffer okay and yet whenever we hear something about men's issues we hear about dating and the manosphere and bullshit like that right they never point to stuff like this actually okay and the vast majority of domestic violence research also shows that uh, similar patterns are shown or are to be seen around the world when it comes to the facts that I've just shown right so international dating violence study of uh, 13,601 university students in 32 countries found that the most common pattern of dating violence was bidirectional followed by female perpetrated violence other reviews conducted in Africa, Asia, Europe, and Latin America reveal similar findings. So as you can see, the vast majority of victims of domestic violence are male, and the vast majority of perpetrators are female, right? And meanwhile, while this is going on, the vast majority of assistance and help goes to females. And this is a massive injustice, 
okay, that feminism has brought about. And nobody cares about that. N no, nobody on the left calls this out or, uh, yeah, society at large doesn't call this out. This is ridiculous, okay? And when it comes to domestic violence-related deaths, when you actually account for uh, domestic violence-related suicides, then also the vast majority of victims are male, right? When domestic violence-related suicides are combined with domestic violence homicides, the total number of domestic violence-related deaths are higher for males than females. And here's also additional evidence for that. So here is uh, data from North Carolina and a time span of seven years. And as you can see in this table, uh, overall domestic violence-related deaths are vast majority of male uh, our vast majority male victims, okay, as compared to female victims. So it's like almost 900 male victims versus uh, 577 female victims, okay? Um, yeah, and then here's also a special report, 50 domestic uh, violence myths, uh, which I recommend you check out in full. I'm just going to read certain sections from it so claim number one when when you see like um phrases like violence against women or when you type in gendered violence in search engines or regardless of whether or not it's just google or some search engines related to scholarly articles or something then violence against women is like specially highlighted even though even though, as it says right here, many domestic violence claims begin with this phrase implying that intimate partner violence against men is so infrequent as to be unworthy of mention. Meanwhile, nearly 250 scholarly studies show women are at least as likely as men to engage in partner aggression and that partner violence is often mutual. And then also the claim, according to the FBI, a woman is beaten every second uh, this does not, the the actual truth is the FBI does not tabulate information on domestic violence. Then also such claims like one in four women experience domestic violence sometime in their lifetimes. And the actual truth is approximately equal numbers of men and women experience domestic violence during their lifetimes. The reported number of victims varies depending on how aggression is defined, right? And they also have something very interesting about historical information regarding domestic violence. So, for example, it is often claimed by feminists that it was just legal and accepted that wives could be beaten or something, right? Meanwhile, uh, the body of liberties adopted in 1641 by the Massachusetts Bay colonists states, quote, every married woman shall be free from bodily correction or stripes by her husband unless it be in his own defense from her assault, end quote. So yeah, this notion that wife beating was just accepted, absolute lie, okay? Then there's also this lie of the rule of thumb, which refers to the diameter of a stick or rod for which wife beating was considered legal. And... The actual truth is the phrase rule of thumb does not appear in legal treaties on English common law. So it's it's just a complete made up myth that feminists have just invented pretty much out of thin air. This is why you should never trust feminists when they speak about history and how women were supposedly oppressed in all of human history or something. This is just complete nonsense. Okay. I have other videos that show this. Okay, and then there's also uh, about uh, child custody in relation to domestic violence. Um, so, for example, false. Uh, so, so for example, a claim like false allegations are no more common in divorce or custody disputes than any other time. And the actual truth is, false allegations of sexual abuse, in fact, appear to be far more common during custody di disputes. Okay, then also ch the claim 
children are safer with their mothers than with their fathers. And the actual truth is data from the Department of Health and Human Services show that 71% of children killed by one parent were killed by their mothers. Okay. And then the claim that feminists also uh, make is that uh, abusive fathers are successful in winning soul Custody, uh, child custody about 70% of the time. And the actual truth is this figure appears to be an embellishment of a claim in a 1989 report by the Gender Bias Committee of the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court, which claimed that in 70% of cases, fathers, not abusive fathers, were successful in winning some form of child custody, though not necessarily physical custody or show custody, a reanalysis of the data concluded that, quote, when mothers sought sole custody, the court granted the request at a rate 65% uh, higher than it did when fathers made the same request, end quote. So yeah, as you can see, feminists are just lying about everything. Fathers are not more likely to get custody of their children in domestic uh, disputes uh, or in custody disputes it is actually the opposite okay mothers are more than 60 percent more likely to get custody when they request it okay and lastly i would also recommend you read this article the gender violence narrative Re rhetoric errors and cherry-picked statistics and circular references this specifically tackled some claims that Dr. Michael Flood makes, who's like this feminist researcher, right, on, on domestic violence, who uh, spouts a bunch of nonsense, to be honest, and this gets exposed in this article. Like he claims, for example, that men are actually more likely to report to the police that they have been victimized in domestic violence uh, cases which is an absolute lie and it is based on like very old data with low sample with, with small sample sizes and uh very cherry picked data right which is explored in this article so check it out i will link all of the references in the description so as you can see the vast majority of victims of domestic violence are men okay meanwhile men don't actually get help from society uh, and this continues when hate mongers such as these feminist groups and organizations network in order to suppress man's rights further okay so everyone has a duty to call this out okay so thanks for watching